damned pandemic would be over if only people would take my vaccine. Why is everyone but me so stupid? Out of all the topical events that Future Arm was supposed to be covering in the revival run, the recent pandemic is the one I was most apprehensive about, and I appreciate the series trying to be topical, but this feels as though it's just too late to really be considered relevant. I'd also argue the series did technically give us a look at a very sudden virus outbreak, and this was done in the Season 6 episode, Cold Warriors. In comparison, this was a very different story. It was way ahead of its time seeing the world of tomorrow deal with a sudden epidemic situation. Rage Against the Vaccine, however, looks back at the worst of the recent pandemic, feeling very untimely with its member berries-like approach. Remember Zoom calls, not wearing a mask properly, vaccinations, misinformation? Ugh, so apparently in the year 3023, we have only just triumphed over the disease, and that is until a new disease is discovered, and a play on words, this one is referred to as Explovid-23, and is portrayed as some form of rage virus. A new virus. Oh, for Pete's sake. I genuinely do like this idea, immediately thinking of films such as 28 Days Later, and yes, the subject of zombies is actually relevant to this story, just not in the way you may think. This approach to the pandemic is admittedly different to what other animated shows have done. Then again, not only does it feel too late when making these jokes, but the whole episode just feels like a checklist. For the sake of missing out on something thought of as topical, the series really goes after the obvious jokes as though it's still topical satire. <laughs> Milking outdated humour with some forced Futurama references doesn't see the writers at the top of their game. Arguably, I'd say the most creative moments from this story are when the virus is not being referenced at all. For example, Leela emerging from a manhole cover inside the office lounge. I love it when visual humour is used to this effect. Scruffy and LaBarbera apparently have a long-standing friendship which really cracked me up. This was honestly the funniest part of the entire episode for me personally. Hey, LaBarbera. How's your grandma? She improving? Yeah, she doing all right. Give her my best. Regardless of heavy criticism, this episode did have its good moments, even though a lot of the gags were just pure eye-roll material. And you can at the very least tell that the people working on this revival do care about what they are making. Maybe the recent pandemic wasn't the best choice for an episode topic, but one thing that did impress me was the amount of cameos the animators managed to squeeze into the runtime. Too many to name all of them, obviously, but notable ones for me personally were Leela's old boss, Randy, and the mermaid characters from season two. As the plot unfolds, we see the virus symptoms in their simplest form, hilariously explained by the news anchor Morbo. Symptoms include blinding uncontrollable anger, as well as a mild cough, which I don't have. I'm fine. Looking at Leela, she's the one responsible for causing the explosive to spread on the surface, it's originated with the sewer mutants, where travel to the sewers is now made illegal. I'm surprised this wasn't capitalised on for more sort of quarantine jokes. Leela returns to the surface where the Planet Express crew feel very uncomfortable in her presence thanks to the news, and then Hermes breaks the tension in the room announcing they have a delivery to make. And surprisingly, the episode does have a heavy focus on Hermes in particular, who is utilised for the B-plot who I find to be honestly one of the more underappreciated characters. After over a thousand years, it's announced that the world has finally triumphed over the 2019 pandemic, and arriving at the Back to Normal Fest 3023 celebration, Leela delivers the head of Bill Nye the Science Guy, or Science Head more accurately, and this is where she unknowingly spreads the disease and everybody present becomes infected. And yes, this is literally where an anger pandemic begins to ravage New New York. And I suppose this is meant to be the writer's method of satirising the frustration people went through during the pandemic? Professor Farnsworth comes up with a method of testing who is infected, and obviously this is a hyperbolic take on the test kits that I'm sure we are all familiar with. For Explovid 23, once you've collected a DNA sample of your brain, a smiling face confirms if you are rage-free, 
However, if you're infected with the virus, this turns into a sad face, reaffirming that Leela is indeed infected with the virus. And my favorite response to this was the grand return of the Angry Dome. Again, a Futurama-specific reference that's much funnier than anything pandemic-related. Quarantine her in the Angry Dome! A lot of the gags going forward deliberately look at the pandemic and how it was handled, just generally speaking, ensuring all the relevant gags are referenced, and we've likely already heard a lot of these before, but credit where credit is due, one of the unique takes on the virus was the zombieism angle. I briefly mentioned before, Explovid 23 is now thought of as a fast-spreading virus that causes uncontrollable anger, where Hermes suggests that this could be linked to zombieism, and how the cure is some form of voodoo. But the cure is always the same. Voodoo. Balderdash! Obviously, the professor disagrees, but that doesn't stop Hermes from going on a personal mission to find a vaccination by his own means. And he scares his wife, La Barbara, by going on a sudden trip to New New Orleans, where voodoo has a large influence. And Hermes and his family seemingly know a lot about this subject, especially when it relates to the undead. And I saw a lot of fans commenting on how Hermes is often associated with zombieism, linking back to several quotes he has said across the series. And even then, only if we can't bring him back as a zombie like Scruffy. Life and death are a seamless continuum. Maybe Hermes was responsible for this using voodoo? Arriving in New New Orleans, Hermes seeks knowledge from the Voodoo HQ and is confronted by his longtime rival, Barbados Slim. And his return was unexpected, and so was La Barbara's in this scene. Yes, we're back to the old cheating gags. But this time, it's just so overt, Hermes is literally just seen as a sad cook at this point. This is a very common criticism of this episode, and I'm so glad it wasn't just me that felt extremely uncomfortable seeing Hermes just allow his wife to cheat on him. And also, like many characters this season, Barbados' voiceover has been recast. He's now played by Kevin Michael Richardson, who has taken on a lot of iconic side characters this run. Farnsworth develops a vaccine, and so does his rival, Ogden Wernstrom. And I love seeing their rivalry unfold across the show, but boasting about why their vaccines are superior to others felt really repetitive and unnecessary, and again... This just felt so forced to ensure that they cover topics such as how many shots you are required, the side effects, and for good measure, let's throw in a joke about microchips. You could honestly play bingo watching this episode with the amount of just random references being strung together for the sake of being passed off as comedy. Spreading misinformation is also an idea used for the plot. Dr. Banjo returns, who previously irritated Farnsworth so much, he delivered one of my favourite lines of dialogue in the entire series. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Like many, Banjo is seen discussing the virus online, where everybody is speculating over its severity, and the twist for this episode, if you want to even call it that, is that the Omicronians are responsible for causing the spread of misinformation in the hopes that this will lead to a successful invasion of Earth. That last bit isn't really thought out, but I can appreciate the sentiment of where they were perhaps going with this story. What else should I post, Dad? Who cares? The crazier, the better. When their invasion begins, it fails pretty quickly, where the virus mutates becoming, (laughs) yep, you guessed it, An Omicron variant. But luckily, a voodoo cure is synthesized from a potion, which will counteract any future infection by stopping the irrational anger becoming rage. And even Professor Farnsworth comes around to the idea of voodoo by the end of the episode. And here's a quote to the animation that I noticed on rewatch. When La Barbara gives him the injection, the needle goes right through his arm. Very subtle visual gag, reflective of an old Simpsons joke with Mr. Burns, but again, it does show the animators do care about what they are producing for future armor. Understandably, like many, I would rather forget what happened throughout the pandemic years, but I guess that's just not realistic. And I've said before on the channel when discussing the South Park pandemic specials, there's a lot of humor to draw upon from this time period, The staying power, on the other hand, is going to be extremely difficult and non-existent. Looking back on this episode in 10 years' time, 
Will it hold up? I honestly doubt it. It barely even holds up now. But that's going to do it for my review and breakdown of Rage Against a Vaccine. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Drop me a comment as well. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Is this the worst of the revival thus far? And for more videos, be sure to subscribe. Look at that. We got through the whole video without saying the word COVID. Are you threatening me?